Nearly a half century after Kokichi Mikimoto first began culturing small, white Akoya pearls in Japan, a Frenchman by the name of Jean-Marie Domard began the first pearl culture project on the atoll of Hikueru in French Polynesia. The pearls he produced two years later were unlike any the world had ever seen. Large, exotic, black, green, aubergine, colors that were completely natural. These pearls were soon to become known worldwide as Tahitian pearls. Tahitian pearls are now one of the most important exports of French Polynesia. We're now at the cultured pearl farm of Mr. Paul Yu, one of the largest and most successful Tahitian pearl farmers in French Polynesia and the winner of four different quality excellence awards. He's allowed us unfettered access to his entire operation, including the grafting, the grout, and even the harvest. I'm Jeremy Shepard, and this is the Tahitian Pearl. Atolls are the preferred locations for Tahitian pearl farms. An atoll is the leftover remnants of a sunken volcano, which then becomes a coral island that encircles a lagoon either partially or completely. The atoll of Takaroa is nearly 600 kilometers from the main island of Tahiti and is only easily accessible by small aircraft. The remote nature of this atoll means that pearl farmers not only work here, but they live here and create their own communities. Technicians and workers on the farm live in modest accommodations right on the water. What the atoll doesn't provide naturally must be flown in, which can be very expensive, so local resources are used to their best potential. Fish are caught and rainwater is collected. First graph. First graph, What we've got here is almost like a pearl harvesting assembly line. When the shells are brought in from the water, they're first opened slightly with a peg inserted to just keep the shell slightly open. The next step is opening the shells completely. The top part of the shell is taken off, leaving the bottom portion of the shell, the part with the mollusk still inside. So once the top's been taken off, the shells then go to Mr. Yu. Mr. Yu personally harvests the second graft pearls here. Once the pearls have been harvested, the next step is to take the actual mollusk out of the shell. You can see this meaty portion here. This is used for fish food and fertilizer. Everything's used. Once the meaty portion's been removed, the last thing you're left with is what's known as the adductor muscle. This is a delicacy. In fact, a lot of the guys here eat this straight out of the shell. With lemon. With lemon. A little bit of lime, maybe some salt and Tabasco sauce. Once the adductor muscle's been removed from the shell, you're left with beautiful mother of pearl. Mother of pearl is sold, the adductor muscle is eaten, every part of the shell is used. Mr. Yu is personally handling the harvest of the second graft. This is the most important harvest on the farm. This is when the pearls are the largest and the most valuable. But even after all these years, the years of spat and grow out, the uh, years in the water, the first and the second graft, you never really know what you're gonna get. Some of these pearls are magnificent. Other pearls, not so much. But the beauty of some of these pearls far outweighs some of these little accidents that we see in here. There's such a variety in the Tahitian pearl. I mean, this is a huge Baroque pearl. This looks like a South Sea pearl from Australia. It's got to be at least 16 millimeters by about 20. Magnificent Baroque pearl and such a rare color too. 
You've got the darks, you've got peacocks, you've got blues. Fresh out of the shell, a silver blue. Beautiful. Again, I'm always impressed by his farm, how many round pearls he creates. I mean, just shell after shell after shell. The pearls are round. So few circle pearls, so few Baroque pearls. Just round, round, round. The least valuable of all the pearls produced on the farm are gonna be the circle pearls. Now, circle pearls are beautiful in their own right, and they still can sell for a lot of money. But a round pearl versus a circle pearl, he wants the rounds. Let's see what we got. Here it is. A pearl inside the gonad. Let's pop it out of there and it's pretty amazing. What we're witnessing here is an integral part of the pearl culturing process. This is known as the mantle selection, otherwise known as the cybo selection. What the technician is doing is cutting a small piece of mantle tissue from a donor mollusk. This mantle tissue is then trimmed and sliced into very small squares, just a couple of millimeters in diameter. You can see these colors. We've got the greens, the purples, the dark colorations. These are the colors they're looking for in Tahitian pearls. Now the reason these pieces of mantle tissue are so important because these pieces contain something known as the epithelial cells. Epithelial cells are the cells responsible for growing nacre. So without these pieces of mantle tissue, a pearl would never form inside the gonad. From here, the mantle tissue is going over to the grafters. In just a minute, we'll actually see the mantle tissue go inside the shell along with the bead. The most important and the most difficult part of the entire pearl culturing process is known as the first graft. What this technician is doing is taking a slightly open shell. She cleans it out just a little bit so that she can see the gonad. She checks the health of the gonad, the size of the gonad, and then makes a small incision into the side of it. In this incision, she's inserting a small nucleus. This nucleus is gonna be followed by a piece of mantle tissue. Once the mantle tissue has been inserted, the shell can be tied back to the chaplaise, put into the water for a year and a half to two years. A flawless operation. So what we're witnessing here is something somewhat unique in Tahitian and South Sea pearl culture, and that is known as second graft. The technician is removing the pearl from the first graft. When he pulls the pearl out of the shell, he does a quick examination to see if the pearl is round and of high quality. If it's not a high quality pearl, he doesn't continue with the second graft. If it's a round pearl, what he'll do is he'll choose a nucleus approximately the same size as the pearl that he just harvested and reinsert that nucleus into the pearl sac. At this stage of the grafting process, a new piece of mantle tissue isn't needed. The pearl sac already exists. He should get a pearl, I'd say maybe another three to four millimeters larger than the one he's harvesting today. After it's been regrafted, the shell goes back onto the chaplais and back into the water for another 18 to 24 months. At that time, when the pearl is harvested, we're going to have a larger pearl, but probably with a little bit less luster because the shell's a bit older by now. That's the entire culturing process. It may look easy, it may look quick, but this technician has years of experience because one slight misstep, one slice in the wrong place, anything could damage this gonad, anything could damage the mollusk, and um, the shell could die. As with any pearl farm, experienced local divers tend to the grafted shells in the water. These locals free dive for the most part without the use of scuba tanks or wetsuits. I decided to get in myself, with a full tank of air of course, to see the shells hanging from the chaplaise and to see the divers at work. After a brief lunch of local fare at the farm, it's time to head back to the airport and on to Papa de Tahiti, 
where we will be visiting La Maison de la Pelle to get a real understanding of how the French Polynesian government works hand in hand with the producers to promote the Tahitian pearl. What sets Tahitian pearls apart is that pearls are controlled by the government. In other words, before they can be exported, the quality, the nacre, has to be checked and okayed by the government before pearls can legally be exported out of the country. Here at the Pearl Department, the pearls are x-rayed and visually inspected. Pearls come in by the trunk load. All these pearls here are being prepared for an upcoming auction, but before they can be sold, they've got to first be inspected. The first test of the pearls prior to export is the visual inspection. The pearls are being examined for nacre quality and surface purity. If the pearls don't pass this test, they've got to be destroyed. We're now in the grading room of Maison de la Perle. What we're seeing is a relatively new program designed to protect Haitian pearl producers. The pearls are being graded for size, luster, color, and surface purity. Once the pearls have been graded, the particular lot is assigned a value. This value can be used by the producer as a baseline to determine what he should sell his production for. The final examination the pearls must go through before they can be legally exported is the x-ray inspection. This technician beside me is checking each individual pearl to make sure that the nacre thickness is a minimum of 0.8 millimeters. If the pearls pass this final inspection, they're legally available for sale and export. If they don't pass this final inspection, again, the pearls have to be destroyed. This is cell block D for pearls, otherwise known as death row. These pearls did not pass the inspections. It may have been an acre thickness issue, it may have been a surface issue, but these are the pearls that are all going to be destroyed. Maison de la Perle has been created in 2009. It is a part of the reform engaged by the French government of French Polynesia. Our mission is to uh, expertise the pearls, the pearls of the producer, help them to commercialize the pearls so we can organize auctions for, to, to help the producer to, to sell the pearls, especially in Tahiti. We want to bring back the auctions in Tahiti. The other mission is to protect the Tahitian pearl and also to promote the Tahitian culture pearl in Tahiti, but also abroad. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Loïc Via. I'm a general manager of uh, the company Poe Black Pearl. Uh, we are wholesaler uh, in Tahiti and uh, we are buying uh, complete harvest from a different island and prepare uh, to our customer in the world. So I'm in the office with Loïc Viard from Poe Black Pearl. He's a pearl exporter. Um, he's got clients all over the world and this is sort of the final step to each of pearls go through before they make it to the world market. Louis, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, um, tell me what's going on here. You were briefly explaining this is a new harvest, so yes. wh what are the first steps? Uh, first steps is uh, we, uh, we deal with the producer. First, mm -hmm. of course, uh, we need to buy his pearl and to agree on the price. Right. Uh, when we agree on the price, we uh, clean the pearl and uh, we are doing the assorting on the shape. So is this the first assortment? Yes. The very yes, first yes. assortment, I see. So first is the shape, round, mm -hmm. semi-round, near-round, um, semi-baroque, short, mm -hmm. semi-baroque, long, circle, and baroque. Of course, we are also taking out the low quality. Right, right. Um, after we, we did the, the shape, we are doing the uh, quality. Uh-huh. Top quality, A quality, B quality, C, D. Gotcha. And so after the pearls have been separated, where do they go? Do you have a vault or...? Uh... Yes, we have a vault over there uh -huh. uh, with all the pearls. You want me to show Yeah, you? please, please, let's go please. see it. All right, so this is it. Um, let me see the vault. Let's go. So wow. This... That is a lot of pearl. Yes, yes. Amazing, amazing. So how many pearls do you think are in here? We is have it... uh, around uh, 800,000 pearls. That's got to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 20,000 necklaces? Uh, good question. I don't know. Uh, uh, about 40 pieces by About 40 necklace. pieces per necklace. So it's That's a lot. That's a lot of pearls, Louis. <laughs> My goodness. I don't think I've ever seen this many Asian pearls in one spot. Why do you have to keep so many? I mean, the turnover, it must take a while to sell this many pearls. So, so why 800,000? 
So we need a big, a lot, a big quantity of pearl because uh, uh, to answer to the different uh, order from our customer in the world, sure. we need a very big quantity. For example, we have some customers that want round shape, top quality pearl, blue pearl, nine millimeter. To get this pearl, we need to buy many harvests mm -hmm. and to get. They want, for example, 1,000 pearl of this shape and quality. Right. So we need to get a lot of pearl to get the color, the shape, and the quality they want. And so that explains why you've got um, each one of these boxes yes. in here tagged with medium dark, semi-round, A, B, C, D. Some of them are mixed. Some of them are completely separated. You've got yes. drop pearls, circle pearls, baroque pearls, even keishi pearls. Yes. Mabe. And also. even mabe pearls. My goodness. Now, now this is a lot of keishi pearls, too. Yes. Beautiful keishi pearls. Yes, yes. Each box is a, a shape, quality, uh, color, and size. Shape, quality, color, and size. Yes. And, uh, so, for example, we have here a semi-round, uh, AB, medium dark, 2,982 pieces. Uh, you know exactly how many pearls are in each box. And yeah. the weight and the size, 11 to 14 millimeter. So when uh, some uh, buyer asking me some specific order, it's mm -hmm. very fast to find the shape, the color, and everything. And you immediately know whether or not you have the pearl in inventory, right? Exactly. You don't have to sort it out. Well, this is really amazing, but um, I want to see some strands. So this is it, Louis. This is the final culmination of all these yeah. pearls. We've got strands. Some of these strands, by the way, are just amazing. A natural chocolate color Tahitian strand. Yes, yes. The greens, you've got silvers. We have also some white. White Tahitian pearls. Yes, that's uh, very rare. We don't find Incredibly so rare. Yes, Tahitian yes. pearls aren't supposed to be white. You can still call this a black pearl, even though it's white. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, this is this is Poi Black Pearl Company. This is yes. a white strand. <laughs> wow, it's amazing. This is what you can create when you have 800,000 pearls in a vault. Yes. It's very important to have a, a big quantity of pearl when you want to match in one color, one shape, one quality, always the same problem. To get the, the shape and the same colors. And the same colors. That's like beautiful. this, for example, an 18 millimeter strand. Well, it culminates at 18 millimeters, about 15 to 18 millimeters. Yes. It's all the same color. Mm. This is a huge strand of pearls. Yes. You rarely see something this large. It's, 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 uh, it's amazing. Well, Luik, this has been fascinating. I thank you very much, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. And hope to talk to you soon. After Tahitian pearls have been drilled, they can be used to create amazing pieces of jewelry. The tremendous color variation found exclusively in Tahitian pearls can be used to complement a wide range of different gemstones and metals, producing truly unique wearable pieces of art. After nearly two weeks on the road, followed by a 10-hour flight from Papaete back to Los Angeles, it's such a relief to get back to my offices where I can pass off the pearls to my staff so they can be photographed, graded, and uploaded to the internet. And I can sit back and relax and get ready for the next trip, which is taking me to the Philippines in search of golden South Sea pearls.